I'm not ready. Yeah, send it. Welcome to Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. This is the show where we talk about mm, we talk about Husaberg and Husaberg related products, especially the 570, which is um, the fastest motorcycle known to man uh, in the single cylinder variety with a cylinder pointing at 70 degrees. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dad, the 70 degrees thing in there before I brought up a KDX comment. Oh, KDX 200. Are we going? Go, we're going to go displacement versus uh, something like that. So there's no displacement or replacement for small displacement. Right. So sitting us with us tonight is um, uh, Big John. It's been a long time. Yeah. And then Logan also. Uh, Logan, you, you got to slide in here to get a little bit closer. Uh, there we go. Just minimi- minimize that distance. Yeah. Socially, socially dis- undistance. Yeah. It's okay. I think. Uh, didn't the election cure that? Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it has. Because yeah, I, because I, I pretty much it's won. It's amazing. All of a sudden, they have a cure for the freaking coronavirus. I won. I won the election. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I voted for Jimmy. That's right. <clears throat> um, I, I let's see. Uh, Jimmy, give the world a link to the show, um, or do you just want to wink? Hey, everybody, got to wink at the camera. Okay. Oh, let's make it awkward. Got that out of the way. <laughs> uh, this show would not be possible without support from some of our sponsors. Uh, do you want to guess who our sponsors are, John? You want me to take a wild guess at it? Or you... Oh, you can do however you want on this show. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I do see an absolute lovely sprocket right here. I don't, is, is, this, is this paid for, they, or should I put this back down? Um, they were a sponsor, and you see how we are good at cleaning out sponsors. Uh-huh. Actually, I need to get a spon- I need to get a sprocket for my YZ125. So hold that thing up. Will, will this thing fit? That one won't. Oh, well. that one is for a KTM. Actually, it's absolutely gorgeous. No, those are good ones. Those are DDC sprockets. Um, they're good, but we're not going to talk about them anymore. No, Just, no. And try not to make a ton of noise with it on the table. You sound like Bob eating chips, which is the other sound we get in this on this show. Yeah, one of us got to, but but the good thing is he's scared of all of us, so he's wearing his mask as he should be, because um, he's ninety nine percent ninety nine percent chance of dying. Is that what it is? That's not bad. I don't know if it's that high, but it's it's high. 99. So because like I'm I'm in the same group as you because I'm over 50 and at 50, and magically you go to 99. Not like these guys here, which are 99.9. They get that extra, like it's a hundred times less chance, right? In the yeah. grand scheme of things, if the way I do math. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> You're doing well. Doing well so far. So okay, um, don't follow me on um, Facebook or Instagram. Because all I talk about is political stuff, right? <laughs> uh, okay, we're here to uh, handle the motorcycle questions. Um, Logan, do you remember what your your yeah, what is it, your third or fourth job in this show is? KTM, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. He's no, no. Get, take his phone away from him. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. So Logan has been he's been busy for the last one. he's been busy for the last couple weeks. Uh, we're not sure. We weren't sure why, but we, then we found out. What was it? Uh, torn MCL? No, girlfriend. 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 Important things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we found out whatever. See, they, they like threw the injury out, but they, they came together. Like, you know, the, 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 the girl saw you being defenseless and hobbling around with your knee brace and stuff on, and then you now you have a girlfriend. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. How many of them? Big moves. <laughs> Big moves. Just starting with just one, right? Just one, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> so, um, Bob's waving his hand in fear. No, I told him when I gave him his crutches for his birthday that they're chick magnets. Crutches for his birthday. Especially when he goes to school. Okay, Logan, go for it. Oh, um, KTM. Powered by a distinct ready-to-race mentality, their North American headquarters is based in Marietta, California, and they're dominating on the racetracks around the world with every product it develops and every move it makes is great. With some remarkable success. On the racetracks around the world? Yeah, remarkable success and uh, leading high-performance street and off-road motorcycle manufacturer. You got all the points. You missed a couple of those key phrases, but pretty good. You know, we, we realized that almost everybody in this room the last time we were here um, rode KTMs. That was, everybody was on KTM. So obviously yeah. this advertising is working, but I think 
we had a sway tonight. I think things have switched a little bit. We might have to talk about some Hondas. I don't. I don't. I don't believe I own a Hondas. KTM. <gasps> what? Not oh. a one. Wow. Okay. Well, by the end of this show, you will likely be buying a KTM. <laughs> <laughs> just, just happens. But this anyways, is the, this uh, is the part where you plug the uh, discount code. The <laughs> discount code for buying a KTM. Yes. I don't think there is one. Ugh. There, yeah. That's gonna, that's gonna be a rough sale. Uh, rough sale. You might have access to some climb discount codes. Need some climb gear? Always. I'm wearing a climb shirt. I never stopped growing, so. Logan's wearing a climb shirt, and you're not. You're wearing a, a Kirk Caselli Foundation shirt, that's, which is also a really good, super good, awesome group. Yeah. Um, uh, Fantastic organization. George, George, I'm sure George is in the room. Um, plug the Caselli Foundation. Uh, for sure, on the the links in inside of the chat room, mm -hmm. and uh, we will uh, work on that. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Recluse. Who here runs a Recluse clutch? Are you afraid to admit it? Aren't you? Because <laughs> they're for old men like me. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I yeah, would well, say when when you have the 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 you know the small fingers and the lack of clutch dexterity and other things that come with gaining age, you know. Losing well, speed, right? So, but you you ha don't fidget because it makes noise on the microphone. But that's okay. I'll take all the toys away from you. But yes, whenever you're ready to put that in my uh, my Honda, I'd love that. You already have it in your Honda. Yeah, but I want the one that I don't have to pull the clutch in. Oh, you didn't get that one. <laughs> you got you've got just the you've just got the torque drive. I got the one I still got to pull the clutch in. With. Right, better oh. by far. But right. we had a talk about like you know why you bought your particular bike. Yeah. And your your bike, yeah. and then what we what, the kind of riding we were doing. We we're doing these awesome long desert rides that required big tanks and long lots distances. of miles and lots of fuel in the backpack and looking like a bomb and strapping them to your fenders and type of stuff like that. Yeah. Right, and then and then and then you got your new bike. So then I bought an X because that made logical sense to, to ride with Jimmy Lewis. And then what happened? Oh, and then we decided to do like you know Switch high mountain single trail extreme stuff <laughs> and rock donkey and yeah you know the the typical stuff that a good X with a large fuel tank and a super small rear sprocket love to do yeah you know. yeah so you feel find yourself wanting a KTM <laughs> I mean I would take a strong KDX two hundred over you know, <laughs> Kawasaki maybe maybe yeah. over a brand new KTM I'm you, not you, not one hundred percent sure but but uh, you have a KDX two hundred. I do. I how, do. C how come you don't bring it out? Uh, um, <clears throat> it's currently missing a motor. <laughs> so That sounds like a good project for a dirt bike test. Which I want to say the last time it ran really good, it was uh, leading in a solid run against your KTM 200. Oh. Remember when we had to push him down that hill for about four hours in the dark almost? Was I in the 200 that time? I believe so. Yeah, I do. I do remember that. <laughs> That was, that was one of those rides. One of those rides, yeah. yeah. That was a perfect bike for that. <laughs> those, I don't think I was on my 200, though. I, I think, I think I was, you were on a KTM 525, but I'm not going to admit that. I th yeah, I think I was, yeah, it was the wrong... It, it was, was only doable on the 200. It was the wrong bike for the occasion. So, uh, hey, everybody, thanks uh, thanks for joining. And so if you're listening to the show in a podcast format, um, we also do it live on Facebook uh, every Tuesday night. And uh, live from Pahrump, Valley of the Dirt People, by the way. Mm. And uh, you can also watch it. You might be looking at it on YouTube's. And we put that up a day or two later. And then you can also comment on those, ask questions there. We generally get back to your questions. And uh, since it's getting dark earlier, Mark Daniel says it's okay to uh, have the tequila fire chat, which we will. <laughs> um, there's the Kurt Caselli Foundation link. Perfect. It's KurtCaselli.com if you're interested and they have uh, lots of cool things there. They actually have um, as well as you know t-shirts, uh, sweatshirts and stuff like that. They have um, stickers that you can put on the side of your helmets with your medical information on. They have like little racer safety packet kits. Um, a lot of good stuff for a great cause. They promote racing safety and help uh, injured mm -hmm. racers. Actually, they try to keep racers from getting injured. Yeah, they, they have is. a lot of good programs at Heron Hounds and even the, the smaller events like that. You know, They, they do a lot of good there. Um, and Craig Albert says, pushing downhill. Interesting. <laughs> it happens, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, if you see the downhill. <laughs> yeah, you have to see the downhill. Um, 
I have a question from uh, what's our first question there? Actually, let's let Logan read the questions and we'll, really? we'll handle the send, answering send things. He there. used to be really good at this. This is this is one of my. But uh, these kids, they take a couple of weeks off and. Oh, this rear brake one. That's one of my favorite ones, but we'll get there. Um, Jose Arvalo. Yes. Great video, short and to the point. Keep it up. Unlike our typical discussions here on this show, sh- this short and to the point. Eh, discussions are different, though. You know, d- discussions can run on, but bike the, information sometimes just needs to get there. Hey, did, by the way, did you see the digital magazine we launched? I did. I think on the screen over there, there should be other pages of it flipping up, uh, uh, going the across there. Scene. I'm sure we got to get the tech guy on that. I think I screwed up on which videos I'm running. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if I had a tech guy. Fantastic, though. There's, there's, you know, you'll, you'll find a picture with actually a play button on it, and it'll link right from the actual digital magazine to the video without taking you away from whatever page you were currently reading. So it's like a, it's like a magazine that has a video player embedded into it. Yeah. So, you know, you can, you can read the skit on it, and then if you want to get, you know, a little more involved in it, you can, you can watch the video as well. It's, you imagine if you grew up and that's the way that was normal? You didn't have to take that that VHS tape, and well, you had to wait like a month to get it because you mail ordered it, and then you have to put it in that machine that always was messed up. Do, uh, do, yeah. do you know what a VHS is? Yes. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so, uh, one of us. Hey, um, so if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about the brand new, just released issue one, volume one, uh, Dirt Bike Test Digital Magazine, which is live up on the website right now. Um, George should have put the link there already, but um, he didn't. I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fire him. I mean, it's hard to fire somebody who's working for free. <laughs> so we already made fun of him today on the flat track, didn't we? I, I don't know. I was busy doing sweet wheelies in the background. Right. And you were you were talking up the camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Logan. What's our next next uh, question? Yowzer. Yowzer. You are forgetting one thing in your comments. I am HO. This is the adventure bike for older adventure riders. Lighter, not 450 to 500 pounds. Easy to ride, puts a smile on your face. I'm assuming that's for the new KTM? KTM 390, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, he says that we are, I think, I, I didn't we talk? I'm pretty sure we talked about that. We said it's, the KTM's targeting it targeting it towards the um you know the entry level rider but that doesn't mean that that bike isn't good for you know somebody who's we'll call them seasoned riders you know guys have been around for a while they don't need all that you know they don't need 1190 um cc's of performance and uh so yeah i think Uh, uh, i mean at at the end of the day it's you know you can you can get a lot out of a smaller bike regardless you know, even you know, beginner rider may be better off on a two fifty, but even an intermediate to expert rider can do a lot of amazing things on a two fifty. Just watch Supercross or Moto any day of the week. You know, it's well. I mean, even but I, I'm, I'm I'm talking size of bike and size of motor. A lot a lot of times people get you know they get the CC range mixed up with the you know the higher CC means higher ability level. But on that bike, the the difference is is that they you know it has it has lower cost components on it. It's you know it's built in India, so it's not a, it's not your super typical KTM, um, but it's it's built in India. It's um, it doesn't have the same high level of you know s- spoked wheels. It has it comes with a mag wheel, yeah. um, thing, things like that, and so it's it's designed more you know to bring people into the market, but. You know, when you're when you're not looking for all that super high level of performance, it works just fine. So I don't think we ignored that. I'm pretty sure we talked about it, Bob. We talked about it in the right, video, right? Absolutely. He yeah. he yeah. almost transcribed it. And then all the traction control and other electronic aids that comes, comes yeah. with the bike. Yeah, there it's it's good. It's uh no, there's, there, there's a lot of room out there for a bike like that. Yeah, so we fixed that. That I that I don't think it's offered too much in the other other brands. You know, okay. K- KTM's always done a really good job at kind of getting. Specific bikes for specific genres of people. Yeah, you know, it's, great, it's a it's it's a it's a pretty it's pretty it's a pretty capable beginner level bike if you want to mm-hmm. call it that, which means it's really good for guys that are going to be riding it in uh, other times. Next, Siba Habanen. Whoa, <laughs> John, you want to take a stab at that? <sighs> Siba. Uh, yeah, no, he no, he nailed this. Actually, that Sib- was that was spot on. Siba, Siba Habanen. 
Okay, what does he want to know? How many Dakars do you have to race to know that word? I <laughs> three and a half. Okay. <laughs> I need to know how it works. Mm. Uh, he's talking about the uh, the Christini all wheel drive adventure bike. It works just like a regular Christini, mm. except it has like three times the horsepower, and it doesn't work because it's only it's a prototype and it's currently not working. But we're working on making it work. So. Um, I think he's an engineer trying to build one himself. It's, yeah, I don't think I don't think he's asking how it, you know, how, how it rides. I think he's asking how they get the power from the motor to the front. Oh, he's asking that. Cause, that's cause that's what I would guess from that question. I need to know how it works. I'll I'll tell you straight up how it works. Magic. It, it's like every adventure bike should have all wheel drive. It's just like, you know, how you have a two wheel drive truck and you go and get stuck all the time, and then you're kind of stuck. And you have a four-wheel drive truck, and you're driving a two-wheel drive, and then you get a little stuck, a little stuck, and you put it four-wheel drive, and you drive right out. That is what that does for adventure bikes, mm-hmm. and uh, no, no better way to explain it. So, um, uh, yeah. Next question. Uh, Rider S Oregon. I agree with George. The 2021 KTM rear brake pedal is too far away from the peg. My foot is a size nine. Well, you should try a beta. <laughs> um, the KTM pedal isn't, it's a little bit farther than it used to be. Like, I think they moved it out a few years ago, but uh, it's not that far out. But George has stumpy feet, too, I think. Did we say that out loud? We mean to be mean to George again? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I can't talk because I have very large feet, so it's hard for me to fit on a motorcycle. <laughs> but I. I can think of like the one out of a hundred times I step on the brake that I don't pick my foot up and set it on the brake pedal. Right. So the proper technique, in other words. Well, I mean, even then, it's you know, on a dirt bike, the pedal's always going to be higher than the peg. So how do you? It should be. How would you even be able to do that with your foot still on it? So you're gonna have to move your foot anyways. So, so you got to move it forward just a little bit. Yeah, I noticed like like on the beta, I I have to reach for it a little bit because it's pretty far out they have they have their pedals are a little bit their pedal pedal and shift are a little bit farther out but um i have a hard time with size questions because i've always been the opposite direction in the size category like i could use that thing you know up by the frame rails (laughs) would be nice yeah um okay so we fix that fix that problem You, you know you can always um cut it and shorten it Actually, they make they make little tips that bolt on, and I don't know if the KTM is that way, but some of the bikes actually have a couple different holes, they, and you can yeah. you can actually move it back and Camera index does. it back. Just yeah, they've back. they've even got them where they're they're yeah, slotted where you can. Tip that moves it back on the pedal. There's a there's a different tip that has a different right. index. Yeah. yeah, so I know there's parts for that Camera that bed. that can that can easily be fixed. Yeah, yeah usually they'll be slotted, and you can and, slide them forward yeah, and back. And, and when you fix that, that's factory level fixing. That's, 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 that's tuning. That's tuning. Yeah. That's that's the stuff that makes a bike work good for you. I, I mean, that's really all that matters. Right. Okay. Um, Karan Head. Ka- what? what was it? What's the name? Karan. Karan. Head. Karan Head. All one word. No. No. Karan Head. Yes. Got it. Karen. Uh. Karen. Possibly. Possibly Karen. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, hi, do you know any details about the new 2021 AJP PRJ7 yet? You sure you got the name of that bike right? Because I'm going to no. do a Google search in my brain right now. If you, But I just searched it and it said, do you really mean the AJP PR7? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what happened when I tried to type it in to the, to the Googles. I typed it in wrong and it said, do you mean this? And I'm like, yeah, because... Yeah. Because um, I didn't know anything about the 2021 AJP PR7, and I still don't know anything about the 2021 AJP PR7 because it was all in Portuguese, and they don't seem like they have the 2021 information. I'm not sure like I, why I would be this the because I guess I well, this is that part where. I can answer your question 100% of the time with 70% accuracy. This is in that 30% where I don't have the answer at all, even though I tried to get an answer. I, I'm not sure that they're going to change that bike that much uh, because they're kind of getting parts and things. It's kind of a, 
I don't think it's really on plan for a big model year change, but you know, you never know. They <laughs> another manufacturer that makes a really nice motor might have gone out of business, and mm-hmm. they're going to stuff that in their frame, which is uh, yeah, and it, it is hard for the hold on, sm- hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, the, hold the presses, stop the stop the presses. Uh, George Justice right now comes in with ADV Pulse's information, the production version of. The 600cc dual sport bike is unveiled. Looks exactly like the one I saw last time. That's the same one I rode a long time ago. It's this. It, they haven't changed it then. That's old news, George. And now you made me fake news. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's fairly attractive looking. Though, it's a good for... bike. It's a good looking bike. It's heavy. Yeah. It is very heavy. And and if you like a thumper motor, like XR600 style, boom, 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 you know, thump motor, it's got one. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of people out there love that bike. Hey, Brian Downs, I'm uh, no problem being late. You haven't missed anything. I mean, like the rest of the show, you're not missing anything, anyways. But he was reading the new digital magazine, <laughs> uh, and uh, they want to know uh, should should they buy uh, an AJP PR7 or a Himalayan, a Himalayan, yeah, a Himalayan. Um, <laughs> That's the uh, that's the uh, Royal Enfield, the Hamalian. Oh, <laughs> I do rather like that bike. We, ha- we actually had one in our school a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. We've and, had them in the past as well. Yeah, so a guy came on one of those, and then and then there was a there was a mispronunciation of the name, and it was now the Hamalian. <laughs> mm. So, um, yeah, I would personally buy a KTM five hundred, and then buy one of those ridiculously expensive. Like rally fairings, fairings on it and some giant gas tanks and go pretend to be Ricky Bray back in the desert somewhere. Well, no, you you buy a you buy a CRF two fifty L and you hardly have to do anything to it because it looks pretty close. It looks the part. Right? You got these monster stickers and graphics? We throw yeah. the kit. Yeah, we got the kit. We got the graphics kit, and yeah. then when we do that with CRF two fifty L. Put Logan on it, then it's all scaled to size. It looks good. I've been I've been waiting for one for my ex, but oh, the graphics kit. Uh, I know a guy. We'll, we'll get them on. Uh, next one, Logan? Uh, David Simmons. So is it er, snappier? Um, didn't think you mentioned anything about that. He's talking about the KTM 300, I think. We really need to give us some context for these questions, Jimmy. I usually put a little bit yeah. in there, but you saw I was a little <laughs> rushed at the beginning of the show. I, I, my, I was trying to put pizza down and yeah. um, find a lost motorcycle. We did flat track, by the way. How'd did recover go? the motorcycle as well. So we found the motorcycle. Been a lot, of, a lot of gains today. Yeah. Um, how'd the flat tracking go? I'm, oh gosh, fantastic! A little, little wet spot in turn one. But how do you think Ricky would have fared out there? Uh, he's a big guy, small bike. Yeah. Probably about the sk- same skill level as me. So uh. <laughs> he tried. He tried to take me out, like when I was riding his bike, and I I let him ride that factory bike that I had. Okay. Like okay. and. And everybody would think like they always say it's it's always the bike. I was riding a factory Honda rally bike, and and he was on a on my nineteen ninety eight XR one hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just trying to clean me out on his bike. <laughs> that he needed to work on race the next not race but uh, train on the next day. Yeah, that's fine. It's amazing how fast that little bike is, huh? It's got a, it's got some parts on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said it was stock today when we were racing. No, it's it, it's it's special. You have to run it with a choke halfway on. Uh, that's that's part of the trickery. Uh, it you're the one that claimed it had modified it's parts. Never recluse, it's it does. Run it. That's why you have to have the choke halfway on. Yeah, ah. it, does, it doesn't have a recluse. <laughs> I have to keep it running. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Logan. Next question. Um, ride with Will said pretty stupid. Honda made the. A Rally 250 should have been the Rally 350 at least. Sierra 450 Rally with the same main ske- schedule and weight of the Sierra 250L and take my money. So he's saying they should have made a Rally Sierra 450, not a 250. Should we let Ricky answer that question? I, I would. I would Later. absolutely love to have a, an answer for that one. Ride with Will. Where's, where's the uh, I, I, Where's I, the JCR HRC replica 450? Why Why is that not? You, you can buy You can buy one of those rally uh, kit fairings for the Honda 450. Too. Oh, they sell. I just thought the KTM guys were so wild that they were the only ones that sold the aftermarket I, ones. I'm 
I'm pretty sure you can find something that'll work on that. So uh, George will link it. Don't worry. <laughs> the kit. Yeah, he'll find there, it. There's a there's a guy over in Italy that builds. It's is a guy named Man, uh, Manuel Luci Luchuizi Luqui. Sounds, sounds like a remember, guy that would build one. Okay, remember when we did that Taste of Dakar event out here, and he was out here. He was he was kind of a special guest of uh, Alt Rider. It was I think the time that that you and Matt had to like light. You're, you had to use your gas and light some bushes on fire to stay warm because you ran out of gas or something. Do you remember that? Oh, I probably try to forget that, but uh, yeah, maybe Johnny was out here for that. It was some, some, it was, but he was out here. But he builds these really cool Project Rally bikes, and uh, I think he built a Honda one at some point or other. But uh, that's probably what'll come up if George uh, figures out that. that I link. wouldn't mind one of those. But back to our earlier conversation about sometimes my x model is really good at open desert mm -hmm. and other times it goes to king of the hammers mm. so there, there's there's that small thing there where like a rally fairing might get in the way because it makes the bike a little more purposeful at one thing yeah and probably a little less good at rocks uh-huh <laughs> okay <But. laughs> Is that is that is that it for questions we got more i, I think no, we're still we rolling still one on this page and a couple on the okay back. Uh, Lalit, Lalit, <laughs> Mr. Yenny, Yenny, Lalit, Yenny. Yeah. Okay. I drove this bike. The seat is rock hard. I don't believe. I don't understand the logic, and it gives my bums. I got my bums destroyed. Mmm, <laughs> the old seat's yeah, too I hard. Drove. That's a KTM 390. He's talking about. What? He's talking about the KTM 390. That thing was pretty plush. Yeah. The, even the stock one, yeah. For, there we go, straight out of Logan, man. I mean, so so I'm gonna just guess that maybe what's his name again? Uh, Lalit Yeni. Lalit Yeni is he probably weighs a little bit more than you do, and weighs a little bit more than I do, and weighs more like John does, and he's going through the foam into the frame rails, and if he's if he's John's height, it's okay. He can get a taller seat. Actually, I'm trying to get a taller seat for that bike. Just because I don't want to be so in the pocket. Well, you run a taller seat on even your 1190. Yeah, but I'm strange because I don't really ride with my feet on the ground, so I don't worry about putting my feet on the ground. It's not an important concern. Um, and the but anyways, I can see if you were heavy and you were kind of sitting in there, and or if you just sit down all day long. And even if you're tall, it's funny because when you're tall and you sit on a bike with a, sh a small seat and your legs fold up, you know, and and, and and so you can't put any weight on your feet and your feet are kind of like in front of you, that'll make your butt hurt. It'll give you a, what do you call it? Bums destroyed. Bums destroyed, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, the bums destroyed, it might have a lot of different factors, so we need a little more info. But um, we actually think that seat wasn't too bad for a stock bike, especially a KTM. Yeah. Okay. Down the, down the home stretch here. Well, we're running out of questions now. Um. N V M C R Rider. Okay. Um, Jimmy, since you are the guru, I have a question Ooh, guru. regarding the Scott stable stabilizer. I have a 2015 Yamaha WR 250F with a Scott stabilizer mounted above the bars. Twice, the pin has fallen out of the mount and been lost. It sure. I'm not sure if it breaks or just gets. Just mysteriously falls out. Any thoughts? <laughs> um, uh, so, first of all, the best thing you can do, because it's a very specific application, and I'm not super familiar with exactly that bike and exactly that setup, is if you call Scott's and, you know, call them, they have great people down there. They have excellent technical support, and they'll probably answer your question without thinking about it. But I'm just going to guess that since you're mounting it above the bars, your kit has the, the 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 frame mount that isn't for above the bars, and you're having to have that pin ride up a little bit too high, and that pin's supposed to be greased, and it's a tight fit, and it's funny it, it, if you on most dampers if you grease up that that pin, you have to actually push it down, and it'll actually spring back up because it, it traps the air inside of there, and if your if your damper's a little low. I could see where it could actually vibrate and work its way up while, you know, while it vibrates without the grease in there, but it work its way up, actually come out and then just fall out. There's nothing to hold it. There's nothing to keep it down and mm -hmm. there's not enough pin inside of the post. If 
if uh, if that's a good way to put it. But the grease uh, tends to kind of keep it, uh, it lubricates it so it, it's able to move, but it also kind of helps make it stick, I think a little bit by suction. So um, I, I would suspect there could be some sort of a, a um, maybe the wrong part uh, sort of thing, or maybe you need a longer pin. And I know they make different lengths of pins to go down inside of that post, and yeah, Bob looks like a what? What do? What is? What is? It's like he's like a parade. That's a, a parade hey, girl. you guys. Parade girl. Really uh, like yeah, right. Yeah, Got they it. Do oh, the, have the muffler the, guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can Bob? Yes. Check to make sure that if the pin's out too far and he's lost it, it hasn't egged out the top of the hole. Yeah, egged out the top of the hole. Uh -huh. Make sure your hole isn't egged out. That's a that's yeah. good advice. But and it'll flip right out if it's egged out. Yeah. yeah. There, another thing, too, is if you bought the stabilizer used, possibly, if it was for an underbar mount situation, sometimes the arm that comes off will be closer to the actual stabilizer itself to make room for it being closer to the forks. And then are you running some taller handlebar setup or something that isn't yeah. specific? There's so many there's so many different options, but it, if you talk to somebody down there, they'll they'll know exactly the questions to ask or they'll ask you. And, and those, those most of the posts have a part number stamped mm -hmm. on them and they'll look it up on their chart. They have a really detailed chart. You can actually probably do most of the research yourself online, but call one of the guys down there. Actually, call there and talk to Steve, and Steve will know exactly the answer and be able to totally help you out because they're that's that's one thing that you know i like about the company that is kind of cool is that you call somebody you're talking to an actual human in the united states that has handoff experience with these things and they they build them and they know how they work and they can generally fix you up real quick so uh pretty pretty cool with that is that it oh one more no, one going. more um Greg Kling. Kling. Kling? Love Kling? your reviews, but not a fan of the wrist and chest mount views. Best view came from the helmet helmet chin mount. IMO. Thanks for the review. <laughs> it's talking about my ride test of the Beta 3. We need to get one of those 360 cameras for the flat track. That way the public can see more of me. You, well, because it, it can't, when, you, when you're running a 360 camera, can't you choose which direction you want to watch yeah. it? Yeah. And you can spin it around. Spin it around? But you're only going to need to see in front of you. Right. Logan, you, sh you handle that. Talk to GoPro. Tell them how big we are on the social medias. Mm -hmm. Why are you shaking your head? Work us a sponsor in there. Have a you don't have no. GoPro. You, they don't? They have? Well, talk to them. Get them to make one. Oh, you, okay, yeah. you find, okay, you find out who it. makes it because you were shaking your head the wrong way. It was going side to side. Oh, I yeah. want to see it go yeah. up and down. When I say Logan, and your head should just start, yeah. it should just start doing that. Yes, Jimmy, we're going to do this. Um, so find the 360 camera that we need. Tell them, tell them who you are. Tell them you work with me, and then we'll get that camera. And then, and then I'll put it on John, and we'll ride around the flat track so everybody can watch me. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that's that's why it. you need the 360 one so we can turn the camera around yeah. backwards, right? So everyone yeah. can watch Jimmy. Who wants to watch us right on the flat track? <laughs> Besides George. <laughs> uh, oh wow, George just nailed it. Zip tie around the pin, just under the arm of the stabilizer. So you tight zip tie so it can't rise up inside. You know if it. But I'm, I'm still fearing that his pin is too short. Somehow the pin is too short or the because post is too short and something is something is wrong. Yeah, it has a... Yeah. Uh, George just put... He, you and George ought to, like, you know, team up there, Logan. He just posted the link for the uh, the Max 6K waterproof something or other <laughs> GoPro thing. You guys should probably... But, yeah, I've, I've done it before. I've taken sub-mount stabilizers and tried to put them on a... Uh, above bar m mount mm -hmm. and they the pin is always way too short you can usually get them in there but the pin will only go about three quarters of the way through the stabilizer arm oh and then it just kind of dangles down there and it, it's, it's hey, likely not to stay hey craig we're going to get you're definitely going to get your uh quest questions to ricky i saw it on that other post which is uh good too and i don't know if we missed anything um on this one somebody is it is it Craig Alberts? Craig, are you the one uh, that that has more Husabergs than me? Are you that guy? Because because I'm going to ding the bell for you <laughs> if that's you. But there was some guy who like started chatting in one of our yeah, things, and he had like five or six Husabergs or something. And I'm like, oh, that guy's got a real problem. That's got to be one more than you. No, I only have two. Why why do you need more than two? Because you know why you need two, right? 
Right. So you can look at one while you're riding the other one. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. No, it's it's because after you ride one, the tire's always worn out, mm-hmm. and you might need to hop on the other one because they make a lot of power. Tires have a hard time staying on them. So if if you just get done riding and you're not really done riding because your tire's worn out, you can hop on the other one and go ride it, and that way you can have your mechanic, your boy, uh, change the tire. Yeah, have, have them jump on the tires and the oil and the air filters and stuff like that. <laughs> so I don't generally have that issue because I ride Hondas and they're just too reliable to need all that type of maintenance stuff. Right. I did see. I did see my good buddy uh, uh, Chris Parker post up. He had he had already found his favorite page in a Dirt Pike Test, the new magazine. He he said that page 93 is the best page in the entire magazine. Just in case you're, you know, flipping through it right now, you can, you can you know, get to that page and see what uh, he says. I don't know why he thinks that. I can't remember what's on that page. I can't Chris, remember. is it? Oh. It was well, the... <clears throat> Rottweiler Performance. Uh, see, my favorite one was, was Trevor Hunter and his first-line shenanigans about <laughs> trying to evacuate the uh, the donkeys of Southern yeah. Nevada. So. Yeah, well, to leave it to Trevor. It was, it was a solid line. <laughs> right. So, hey, um, we've got – we've uh, Ricky, are you fed? You well-fed right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm good. Recovered? About ready to sleep? Go to sleep? Almost. Almost? Testing all day. Okay, so we're going to – we're gonna Bring in the A-team. A-team. You want to stay there, Logan? you got some Ricky Brabeck questions, don't you? Not He's off the top of my head. Not off the top of your head. You didn't practice? I'm bowing out. You're bowing out. Hey, John, it was awesome um, smoking you on the flat track today. Thank you. Yeah. You, should, you, you know, you, you and Ricky could talk about how tomorrow's going to go because I might ride my Husaberg out to the dunes with them. Appreciate and, you getting a chance to see you, me. You know it's, you know it's going to happen if that happens, mm-hmm. right? Lots of roost. <laughs> so... Um, so uh, welcome to the show, Ricky Brabeck. It's been a little while. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's not long enough, right? Not long enough. So you can put the headphones on if you want, or you can just talk into the microphone, however it works. I think we look a lot better like this. Right. We look like we're doing business. You hate PR. I hate PR. But that's what that's what comes with victory. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I just like to race, load up, and go home. You know yeah, how it is. I know how it is. <laughs> it's like I, 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 I like that about you, and it's like, it's like, it's like where did all this come from? Like where did all this media – you, you know, come from. And it's like, we, we talked about this. It's like what you dream of. It's, it's totally what you dream of, but you have no idea. What did Toby, Toby, Toby Price tell you? He told me to turn off my phone for the next three months, but <laughs> I never turn my phone off and I'm still getting interviews and emails and phone calls. And it's, it's amazing how many people are out there wanting to interview you. You know, it's like, just like copy and paste from this magazine to your magazine. It's right. all the same, right? Yeah. Well, same feel, questions. Well, yeah, you feel like you're saying the same thing, but but they're it's different people haven't they haven't seen the other things that people say. You should probably be pissed off at me cuz I make you come in here. Yeah, you made me haul ass across the lake bed, get my truck dirty, come here. Ooh, truck dirty. <laughs> 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 little little fesh fesh out here in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. So, uh And no rain. We got rain at home, dude. There's snow in the mountains by my house. There's snow in the mountains around here, too. We we got rain, but it's so dry here. I mean, it literally sucked it up within, like, milliseconds. It it We were on the dry lake bed, and we had a pretty good shower come through. And it it, it went, you know, it almost looked wet, and then it just it just dried up again. It, it was, it was, it was, it, made, it actually made the silt beds really dangerous because all of a sudden they didn't, they, they shrunk about half of their depth. But then they were still half of the depth underneath. It was like a tiny little layer of crust on it, and... Uh, pretty, you know, all the UTVs are have been just digging silt beds and stuff. So all the golf carts, golf carts. You got a couple of them. I got two of them. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> <laughs> so they're fun though. They are fun. Good. That's that is a fact. Good times. So you are you are on the Dakar countdown. Yeah, um, we're working towards Dakar, and we're trying to do two or three red books a week, and trying to get focused and try to get in the zone. So uh, that's kind of what drove me out here to Pahrump. No, I thought it was going to come on Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. No, we just talked We just <laughs> talked about this. <laughs> oh, I thought everybody wanted to be on this show, right, Logan? Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> he, he ditched out for two weeks on me. I can't believe that. This One of these days we'll be famous and everybody will be like, there'll be a line of people wanting oh, to get in guess here. Oh, who just showed oh, up. We got a, maybe we got another guest. We have another guest. Another guest, potential guest showing up. Actually, he didn't miss nothing because I just came on. I know. Yeah. See, you could have rode with Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Campbell. 
Uh, welcome to the welcome to the show. You're gonna have to sit in the sidelines though. We just welcome we, to the 48th show. Yeah, uh, no, hey. it's 80 83rd. 83rd show. 83rd Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. So um, here's here's the question. You know, we talk about cut and paste questions, but it, um, <laughs> Craig, Craig Albert actually had a had a question. He said, "Question for Ricky: Have you heard if Dakar is going to go to using electronic roadbooks? And if so, do the riders have any?" Uh, capability to revise them before use. Uh, I think Dakar next year, 2021, um, Dakar will be paper, but um, the world championship after 2021 Dakar is going to be electronic and we will not have access to uh, review any roadbook as they're going to load it into our system. I think 25 minutes before the start of the special. So explain that. So you, you literally have a, you'll have a, We'll have basically like a tablet, like a iPad more or less instead of a, like a lunchbox style for paper. And then, um, we'll ride to the start of the special, which is, I mean, it could be, you know, a lot of kilometers or it could be a little amount of kilometers. But when we get to the start of the special, they'll type in a code on our unit and it'll download the road book into our iPad at that very moment, 25 minutes, or I think 25 or 30 minutes before the start. So are you are you are you scanning through it looking? Are you, can actually it's it, do we even know if it's like can you do it with your finger or? Uh, no, it's a it's a button just kind of like how on your factory rally bike you have that Bluetooth button. It's the same thing. On my factory rally bike, yeah. you're talking about mine. Yeah, because I run digital already. I've been running digital for a lot of years. Yeah, <laughs> way ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it gets you know what I like about mine is like how when we're rally training it's like a hundred and what hundred seventeen out in like needles. And mine just stops working. Yeah, then you follow tracks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have to do it. I just shortcut because I made the road book <laughs> and I cheat. And you wonder how I got there so quick. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, the, I think that di- I think I'm 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 actually I'm excited for it because like it's anything to eliminate like advantages for guys that are, I mean, no matter what, you're always going to try to to have as many advantages as possible. Push the limits. Yeah, push the limits with stuff. And that's what that's where, like, Map Men evolved. Because Map Men was kind of starting when I was racing. We were starting to get guys that would – you didn't you didn't have the, the ability to, like, run it on Google Earth and look at it in that detail, but you could look at it and then your, your guy would pull out Russian satellite maps or whatever really good stuff and you get to see some, some things. But, I mean, it got to the point where they were making you guys almost the night before virtually run the stage. Yeah. And yeah. now, now though, for the Dakar, um, 2021, we, we get the road books every single morning. It's, it's back. To, so then last year it was only four times. I, yeah, four I don't know. Times. Yeah. It was something like that. And now they're, it's every morning, 25 minutes before you start. Yeah. That's, so realistically, if you get your road book 25 minutes before you start, it takes about two or three minutes to load it. And then you have to roll up to the starting line. So you realistically only have about 15 free minutes. Yeah. So it doesn't really give you that much time to look over a road book, especially when it's like 500 kilometers long. <laughs> You're not going to be doing too much studying, you know? It's almost like training here where you get your road book like an hour after you're supposed to start. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You get your road book an hour after you're about to start or about midnight when you're just tired and your eyeballs are it's, ready to fall out of your head. I actually think it's better when you get your road book at midnight the night before and then I hand you the new road book in the morning because I... Does, does and I change, tell us to tape it. Change my mind. Yeah, tape it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just the, the perfect organization out here. Oh, it's kind of like this show. It's like the road books out here are kind of like the show. It's like, but you know they're magic, right? The road books we have are magic. Say yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's because everybody, everybody They're pretty knows, magical at times. Everybody knows they're magic. <laughs> <laughs> so. Unless Jimmy edits in at four in the morning, then that day doesn't turn into magic. Yeah. <laughs> that is the magic. That is the magic, the four in the morning road books. <laughs> um, Craig Albert says, I know Ricky is one, if not the best, when running a non-doctored road book. There we go. Craig Alberts. What's a doctored road book? Probably uh, Matt Man Notes Matt or something. Man Notes. Yeah, that's. I know you didn't. You didn't like that. I mean, you get pissed off when I start telling you, like, "Hey, this." <laughs> it's like just let's just do this. <laughs> yeah, it's better for me just to follow the road book and not look at it because I think about it too much. Yeah. So, um, any other? Let's see if we got in the chat room. Have you been paying attention to that thing, Logan? Because mine's so not. at the top. Right. There is. 
one, uh, Curly Stoker. Okay, he's got a question. Uh, Jimmy, really enjoy the show. Front forks and suspension question. 2017 TX 300 front end tends to have a feeling that they want to dive on me when I'm in turns. More in high speed, single track, best advantage to help curb that. Uh, so he's saying his Husky 300? Yeah. So that was a bike. Sounds it's, like he should have bought a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, the, uh, the, you know, that is a really good answer because in all honesty, that's the Honda forks are better at that. That's a characteristic that I, I so did he, did he, did he give us any height, weight, any weight, anything no. like that? Um, we don't know. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of back up and, okay, I'm just going to guess that you're in the right range for which bike TX or? Air uh, TX. TX. TX is uh, air fork. Yes. Yeah. TX is air fork. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna guess that your 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 sag is good. You've been sp- suspension testing all day. You should be answering this. <laughs> I don't know anything about those white bikes. Always start with your ride height. Ride height. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's where I'm going to. It's like make sure your ride height's right because maybe if it's too high, it's putting too much weight on the fork. And even I've seen a po- point where people have it too low. And then, and then when they do start, especially from high speed, they slow down. There's a big transfer of weight forward to back. So you can have some stuff. So A, make sure your ride height's correct. There we go. If it's the air fork, it's really easy to change your spring rate by adding a little bit of air. So, so try a little bit more air. And if it's only like kind of, if, if maybe it starts getting too stiff when you add air, then maybe try using the compression adjustment to fix that. And if that doesn't seem to be the issue, try opening the rebound up to to help help it ride up a little bit higher. Or it could be a combination of all those things. Or you can send your forks and shocks to um, somebody else and buy a Honda, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of all your issues. All, all the issues. How is that bike going? Good? What bike? Your bike. Yeah, good. it's going really good. It's going to be able to handle the Husaberg tomorrow. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I don't. I don't. I don't even. I'm. I'm almost out of tires, so I don't even know if I can ride it. <laughs> but I did. I did rebuild my factory. Hey, KTM. there's no excuses, dude. In Dakar, we have to use the same rear tire for two days. I, that's going to be tricky. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I've got training plan for that. Well, Jimmy's rear tire is used for like three months. <laughs> well, I don't have Kendall out. I don't have a Kendall. You know, I don't have a, I don't have a Kendall to come and change him all the time. He did put a sticker on my bike last time, and that was the last time, the second to last time it got worked on. But this time, I put a new piston in it, so it's it's that thing's not going to smoke nearly as it's going to smoke everything, but make smoke. That's what it's going to do. The bike's good, and I got I got one more that's in in line to get new top end and ready to go. So I'm going to have all my bikes are going to be on point. I'm not going to have to like Jimmy rig. Cut, cut wires, Jimmy rig anything, all that stuff. Uh, did did you see the new issue of the digital magazine dirt bike test? Yeah, I saw it when I was doing like ninety five miles an hour, <laughs> trying to make your show on time. But that's training, and I shared it. Oh, you did? Yeah, awesome. That's but that's that's training for you, right? Because that's what you do on your motorcycle, so you can do it. And of course, you were driving on the dirt when you did that when you shared it. Yeah, yeah, totally dirt. on the dirt, right? So so it's just like doing that doesn't ma- make it any safer. <laughs> It just, just, uh, it's just like doing a map book on the thing. You know, you're doing lots, of, lots of stuff. That's what I, I don't think that. You know how when you have those sketchy moments when you're like texting and driving. I mean that you know when it used to be legal before it was illegal. <laughs> I mean that's like nothing compared to navigating on a on a rally. No, it's not, and that's how that's like the best way to tell someone that's how it is to navigate and ride though, because if if they don't know how it is, then you have to explain it like texting and driving in traffic. And you shouldn't do both things at the same time. No. <laughs> no, bad bad news. So did anybody like that you shared the magazine? I don't know. I haven't been on uh, Facebook since. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I know what else you have. You have T-shirts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I have T-shirts. Not with me, but I got them. Oh, I wasn't asking for one. Logan oh. was. Oh, shit. Sorry, <laughs> bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, too. John's John's a big fan. So uh, where where do we where do we where do we go to get those? Yeah, you got to go to rickybrabeck.com and uh, place your order. I have two new shirts and uh, sweaters coming, hopefully by the end of this week, and I think they're 
They're going to be good ones. Sweaters, like knitted, like like your grandma? My grandma made them, yeah. Grandma made <laughs> <laughs> Is it kind of like here where we have our uh, all the T-shirts there, and then and then when you get an order, you have to go and you have to put it in a bag yourself and everything? No, I, I paid the extra uh, 50 cents, and they bag it for me. Uh, I would, well, what about... <laughs> What about getting the bag into the envelope and then sending it away? Yeah. Uh, I do that. You, you do that too? Yeah. Oh, man, I, I'm so glad. Because that's what you know when you're buying a T-shirt from Ricky Brabeck, he's going to personally... Uh, I got like a thank you card with an autograph. I throw in some stickers. It's you're, a whole ordeal. I do it at like 6 in the morning when I'm drinking coffee. George, George, you better have that link up to that to he Ricky's... Right on. Yeah. George is on the gas. Hey, and we saw George out at Best for Mine Road, and he turned around, and he didn't want to get his Raptor dirty. Yeah. When? At the Rebel Rally. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to get it dirty. I don't know. I was Me and Johnny went riding, and I saw a Raptor turn around. I said, what is this guy doing? And he went, he went back out to the highway, and he juiced it down the road. And I texted him. I said, hey, uh, you're lost. You need to go down Best for Mine Road. And he texted me back and said, is that way faster? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was uh, he was setting checkpoints. He was one of my checkpoint setting guys. At and, 247 and Best for Mine Road? Yeah, yeah. Because you guys are out doing um, testing for hare and hounds. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so our, because our camp, because Johnny texted me and said, I know where your camp's at. Because rebel rallies are all secret. Like, yeah. And the camps are all secret. And he's he's like, hey, I know where your camp is. Because you remember, you even you said, hey, where's Rebel going to be in Johnson Valley? Yeah, because I was going to come hang out with you. You can't. It's COVID. <laughs> can't, COVID protection. We're hanging out right now, aren't we? Yeah, but that's not the rebel rally. Oh. This is special. You just wanted to come hang out because there's like 200 women. <laughs> I wanted to hang out with Jimmy Lewis. <laughs> wow, that's strange, Ricky. <laughs> I should be scared. <laughs> so, yeah. George, uh, George was doing work, but he probably was lost. But he, he, he actually took his Raptor and some pretty gnarly stuff. You know, you know when you were on one of those uh, NAR rallies a couple couple weeks ago, and you were riding up um, by Black Mountain Ranch, and you went through some of those canyons that were like yeah. really tight and twisty. On one of those, he drove his Raptor through there, and he had to stack rocks and use a Max track to get it. Really? Some, yeah. Awesome. Some, That's fun. Yeah, he's putting he's putting the miles in that thing. He's not he's not treating it like a what do you, what do you call a raptor that you don't take in the dirt? A princess? Oh, I don't a know. Princess? Sweet yeah. princess? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like yeah, it's princess. It's not a princess truck. Raptors are like dirt bikes. You just go in the dirt. You go. Yeah. That's what they're made for. How's the Bronco? Broncos, same thing. <laughs> Broncos, <laughs> same Broncos. thing. <laughs> they're made for dirt. So these these are guys, Ricky. He's got he's got. Two UTVs. Johnny's got Broncos now and Raptors. Ford Raptors and stuff. They're all cage guys. I'd hey, stuff. take it easy. We're not cage guys. I've old trucks. We spent all day in the desert on bikes. Yeah, uh, I know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm jealous. I don't have Raptor. <laughs> got a I've, box fan with 250,000 miles on it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll sell it to you. So, Ricky, during training, do you try and get into the same routine as Dakar as far as sleep and food goes? Uh, as far as food, food's really hard just because when you're over there, food's definitely not the same as here. Um, and I don't want to deprive myself while I'm here at home. So uh, I do the best I can with the diet and uh, try to get into the zone as much as we can. But it's, I feel like coming to Jimmy Lewis compound and doing road books <laughs> is a lot harder than the actual Dakar. So when we're here eating pizza, drinking beer, it's pretty, pretty much, uh, close to what you do but at you can't get beer in saudi arabia no no you can't yeah so it's it's worse <laughs> but the food is more or less the same so <laughs> well, what, what were you eating last year it was uh, beef ankle beef ankle <laughs> i remember that post i was like oh boy i would have a hard time with that beef ankle mustard and tabasco i think we got yeah. tabasco a sketchy pile of rice with the sheep head in the middle yeah <laughs> sheep, pretty sheep, gnarly sheep head rice yeah, yeah. That's I, that's that was the that was one of the hardest things for me was like when you get to the bivouac and there's just like four pigs just in the parking lot just getting roasted. Oh, that that I'm I'm okay. There's a lot of good stuff there, but when the the head is chopped off and set on top of the the couscous or whatever. The, yeah, you got to pick up the tongue, pick up the eyeballs <laughs> to get to the meat. Yeah, it's gnarly. It's a delicacy. There's a lot of there's there's some people going to Dakar this year that I don't think are ready for it. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it the first time I went. That was I, I. Luckily, I found that you could always go to the the cook's truck. You know, the the, the back then it was a big uh, trash truck. You know, like the like the trash trucks. Yeah. That's what dinner was cooked out of, and you could go and 
they would always have a, a big bowl of pasta and they would take you a scoop of pasta and throw it on there. And then they try to throw some secret sauce on it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I just go back and get the ketchup and just put the ketchup yeah. all over it. And it was just like I was a kid back at home. And my dad cooked dinner. You know, was like, <laughs> well, now our program, our program's getting better every time we go. Yeah. Like me and Johnny and uh, my teammate Nacho, we kind of learn every year, like what we should bring, and what we should do. So uh, I'd say this year we had, you know, pretty good success with our diet and our eating and our program and i think next year is only going to get you know a little bit better so yeah, i think it'll be great and it's just everything's getting i mean you guys are racing harder for sure um in you know so like i remember when <laughs> when i went there was guys that were on real programs as far as their training went and as far as what they were eating and that special food and all this stuff and it was they could manage it for about three or four days during the rally they could keep their normal routine remember nanny roma <laughs> this big bag of special food that yeah. was on the truck that didn't show up <laughs> whole rally went to shit really it, I, it really it really did because he, he was so worried about his food and his special food and and all of a sudden you had to eat the the, the goulash or whatever the heck came out of the truck on a marathon stage and <laughs> it was like okay so it, it was uh he hit a wall different different times but uh yeah we try to make training you know training it's like this is like summer camp out here training it's like uh you know got a pool oh we yeah pool. <laughs> except for now it's freezing outside yeah, and it's on 120 ice, it's ice bath. i mean you have to pay a lot of money to get in an ice bath i got it for free out here right <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> you just got to buy a class <laughs> <laughs> so um Let's see, cage guys. <laughs> Do you want him ever to come back? Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll come back. <laughs> um, I, I use my cage on my on my UTV. I'm, I'm, I, there's a good reason they put that thing on there. It's, I've had to bend it back a couple of times. Um, that means you don't have a strong cage if it's bending. Oh, it came off like a 12 foot ledge. Like, oh my gosh! It was. I was doing King of the Hammer stuff. I was practicing. So <laughs> we <laughs> we should do. Hey, why don't we do King of the Hammers and yours? Me and you. You drive the desert and I'll drive the rocks. Um, we'll I, lose. I, no. Why are we switching? Oh, to switch? Yeah. Because I'm good in the rocks. Except for that one time I was on the rock ledge. And it, yeah. Ask Texas Jesus. He said I was good in the rocks. <laughs> he said, I, I, in a UTV, I think I'm even better. I think. I don't know. It, it, as long as it's your TV, you, your UTV, it'll all be good. Don't you have Honda sponsorship? We'll race the Talon. Yeah. Yeah. We know Fabmaster will fix it up. Jamie Campbell, Talon Race Co. Talon Master. Talon Master. Oh, now we got to quit talking about UTVs. Everybody's like, talk about motorcycle stuff. <laughs> hey, we're all gearheads. We all like all, all the different things. If it's got an engine and it goes in the dirt, we're on it's, it. It's all good. So do we have any other any other Ricky questions in there? Um, Victor Andre. Uh-oh. Airbag vests are required in Dakar. Are you practicing with them? Yeah, I just uh, wore mine for the first time today, and it was, it was different. Didn't you? Didn't you wear them last year? Uh, no, different one. It, yeah, we there's a new model now. Um, it's it's different. Yeah, and it's a little bit heavy, and it's awkward at first. Obviously, you know, it's a little bit more weight and a little bit tighter against the body, and I like to be more free and more loose, and not have all that stuff like stuck on me so because because last year you and andrew had like what they were early versions or yeah type ones or that was something? two years ago two years ago yeah when andrew had it out here and he's doing a video right okay yeah. yeah so it's like a it's like kind of like a bulky chest protector uh it's not as bulky as you think but it's just it's it has like a layer an extra layer for the air like it has an airbag in the vest, so it's like an added layer, basically. It's so it's like thicker. It's so thicker, it's, yeah. So it's all it your, doesn't all breathe your, now. All of your other gear, yeah, has to be on top of it. Yeah, and we're training with it now. Uh, I wore it today for the first time, and we're gonna wear it until we go. Yeah, and you don't have to wear neck protection anymore. Uh, no, that was never required, and I think with the new vest or the new uh, jacket, it it you can't it, wear a neck brace because it does blow up it on the blows neck. up into a neck yeah. brace. Yeah, I've seen that before on yeah. some of the stuff. So pretty cool. Thanks, Victor. That's like uh, the first time Victor's asked. No, he's asked a lot of good questions. He usually asks crazy questions. Don't worry. <laughs> there's there's got to be one. There's got to be one coming. So I can tell you're nervous about the Hoosberg tomorrow. 
No, I, I was actually talking to Johnny today hey, about hey, it. What what happened to the bell? Nobody's ringing the bell anymore. Yeah, um, <laughs> they they ring a bell anytime I say Husaberg because I got something wrong with me. <laughs> well, I heard that every time you read the Husaberg, it breaks down. So oh, um, that was one. Okay, that was one time. <laughs> it didn't really break down. It just like had intermittent. And you sent me a photo of a blown out wheel. Oh, that because that, 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 that's from the Husaberg. It, no, it just twisted. Yeah, that twist, thing's falling apart. It twisted the spokes right off the whole. We it like the 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 tire was getting traction, and the the Husaberg wanted to go, and it just ripped the spokes right out of it. You should be riding in the dirt, then not the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> Get some slip on that thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, Jimmy Lewis. Do you think the Alpine's air vest would have uh, mitigated my injuries when I had the horrific get off on the? Honda last fall. So he's talking about he was riding the um, the Sierra 50 on huh? a flat track. George, he had, he did a belly flop on our flat track on a Honda 50 and broke ribs. And he's wondering if that would have that would have oh, saved him. For sure. Do you it think senses it senses your movement as soon as it like senses a certain amount of G's, it blows up. Like my teammate Nacho, mm-hmm. he fell off the motorcycle, but he didn't fall off. He jumped off and landed on his feet, and it blew up. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think he jumped off, like, so aggressive, you know, to one side. I think it sensed it and, like, psst. Huh. I, I, do you think, but George was going at least four miles an hour when this happened. I watched it. Actually, I saw him riding up to the track on this thing, and I just, I saw nothing good could happen. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think he got, like, maybe three or four laps in there, and he just hit some of that, you know, the, the flat track mud. He just went into the front end, and you're on a 50. You're pretty far over the front end, and he just, just knifed went, it. Just, just <laughs> looked like a Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Victor says uh, it's too expensive for him. He would. He's a Mexican, by the way. Uh, just tie pillows in the front and back with tie downs. And, and, and by the way, Johnny, Victor is a Honda guy. He's XR guy, like, well, CR500 too. He has a CR500 that he keeps in his house because he doesn't want to get stolen. But he has, like, a stable of XR400s and XR600s uh, down down there in, uh, in uh, uh, Torrance, I think, is where he's at. So, yeah, bubble wrap. They're saying bubble wrap is the— Bubble wrap would be good. <laughs> It'd probably breathe. <laughs> That's no good. Um Okay, is that is that it? Is that it for the uh, for the questions? Oh, let's see, Ricky, would you ever do a training weekend similar to Skyler's Molly Moto Skyler's Malls Moto Weekend? So that's Skyler Howe, yes. Yeah, I don't know if I would ever do that. That seems like a lot of work, and I mean, I, I would rather just go trail ride with, with people rather than try to coach them because that's not coaching sucks. Yeah. I don't know if it sucks, but it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather just ride with them and have fun, you know. Especially, it, and I don't think I don't think people because I get I, people want to come and train all the time with rally, and I just don't think they understand the scope of like how difficult. I mean, just to like it's it wouldn't be that hard to say, okay, here's here's what the lexicons look like, and here's what this stuff means, and you know, just the very you think it's the very basics, but it's it's. It's not even the basics. It's just kind of like, okay, here's how you do it. But then it's like, how do I do this while I ride? And like, what am I really supposed to think about? And I mean, I you you know from the very first time you came here, you'd kind of done some basic training before, yeah. and, and it's 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 much different. My problem with coaching is I talk pretty dumb and slow already. So when I'm trying to explain to somebody how to do something or to help them, and they're looking at me with a blank stare. I don't know how how much more I can dumb down my conversation because I already <laughs> talked pretty pretty dumb, so yeah. I'd be kind of screwed. I, I is it funny? I had a lot of people tell me they're like, "Man, he on, on the like on the TV, you come across really good on the TV," and then somebody talked to you. They watched a lot of the Dakar interviews, and then they got the chance to talk to you like at one of the one of the events afterwards or something, <laughs> and 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 they're like, "He's he's like totally different guy." I'm like, "You try doing 500 kilometers." on a motorcycle at mock speed navigating and they're handing you that, that that microphone comes on your helmet comes off microphone in your face yeah cameras and, microphones and like your brain isn't really there no it i mean like that's the same thing like it finish. gets worse dude you get to the bivouac and there's like nine more interviews 
<laughs> this is the, the struggles. Um, like it's the same thing. Like you know, like you can attest to it. Like finishing Baja. You, you know, you, you've been on the bike for six hours or something like that, and then it's like it's like tell me what went on, and you're not even navigating the Baja, and you're like, I I rode well, you know, and I I laugh at the like at the Supercross interviews and stuff, and and those guys they only did it for twenty or thirty minutes, still high level exercise, you know, and yeah, and craziness, but like your brain is fried and they're like, Hey, how did the day go? And you're like, uh, I navigated good. And I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I almost you, crashed and yeah, no one saw it. So none of you guys believe me. Yeah. You get hungry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Hey, and I want like cold water, not hot water. It tastes like rubber camelback. <laughs> uh, struggles are real. Um, okay. My ass hurts. I've been on the bike since four in the morning. What, what kind of ass is it, Logan? Um, bum destroyed. Bum destroyed. You got to remember that for your interview. So, so when they go, they go, "How do you feel?" I'm go, "I'm bum destroyed." <laughs> <laughs> On the first day, the first long liaison. I'm bum destroyed. Yeah, those bikes aren't made to sit down on. Um, okay, well that's I think I think we've 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 exhausted your uh, train. We got to do we got to do um, a video or something tomorrow with your. Monster guys, more more media. Uh, this is another thing that I was like super stoked for. You mean but you after, love doing it? Yeah, after the first day, I was already over it, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know when they're showing up, and I don't know where they're going. So hopefully, you do. I got it because I gave them your information. I know I got it all figured out. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on the Jimmy program. These oh, guys, are, they're gonna have a rough day and a day, and it's not gonna end. Like at the end, like they probably think that like day is like nine to five. But they're gonna they're gonna want to shoot. I'm sure they're gonna want to shoot when the light's good. Like, yeah, they have a yeah they have a bunch of equipment. And the last time they were here was in 2018, I think, when it was like 119 degrees. Oh, yeah. in the in the dunes. So they'll come in shorts and flip flops. It'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. So we'll just we, we took them to Glamis, so they were down there for a day. They're good for there too. <laughs> so yeah, um, it went. So they're they're working on a kind of a documentary. Yeah, that's so, what I was told. They're working on a documentary about Dakar and. About uh, American being on top, so yeah, stay tuned. I don't know when it's supposed to be released, but I think it'll be nice. We'll put a link to it in the, the Dirt Bike Test magazine. I promise. There you go. We'll add it to the uh, magazine. Add it to the magazine. So no, we're gonna make a new one every every four months. Right now, we gotta make a new one. So I'm only so I'll, I'll turn into a real bitch like every three months. Oh, <laughs> Okay, Jimmy uh, can't breathe for another two weeks. I know that was my that was that could <laughs> that was and that was and it went on for another week after that. We were a week late, and I, I was made me mad. Well, I'm glad we're here and we're we can good. have tech talk and eat pizza and ride ride, ride, uh, ride dirt bikes sand. tomorrow and see how that Hoosberg holds up. Ride sand dunes. We we should should we no we it doesn't yeah, it's not safe. It, it's too cold in the morning for me to ride because I'm old. And then, like, I can't. Hoosberg really, probably doesn't start up when it's that cold. I can't, yeah, I can't make it. I can't ride back because I don't have a head, good headlight on the Hoosberg right now. So we'd probably just have to Glow ride, the, ride in the truck. <laughs> 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 you can borrow my 450 I'm, I'm going to take Honda. my UTV there. That's what I'm going to do. I'll take my UTV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a Honda. It then I look, like, I look like part of the team. Yeah. Last time, so last time, like, remember that time I came out there, rode out there from here when you guys were training? And I went out and we were doing training and I got there and, and Johnny being the night, you know, I'm on a KTM and they're all, they're all Honda. And I just, it's kind of high hey, let's going, whatever. Did they make you walk in? You had to park out, out back and walk in? Well, they looked at me kind of funny, but you know, they, they, and they Johnny probably warned him that this, this ding dong on a KTM is going to come out here. And so the first thing Johnny says is like, Hey, do you want some gas? And I'm like, no, oh, I got this. You know, I like, I, I'm a big tank big, on. Big, tough guy. Big tank. Didn't want to take gas. I, 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 got, I got gas. So they were going to do a stage. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go ride the stage with them. It was just, they were doing like practice stages. So they're kind of short and, and just kind of short little sprint stages, maybe 100 kilometers or whatever. I go, yeah, I'll go do this. Johnny's like, sure, you don't want gas? I'm like, Psh, no, no problem. I got, look at this thing. It's half full. Uh, the funny thing is between my, on my, on my, my factory KTM rally bike, uh, I have the, the four gallon tank and I have the six gallon tank and they, they, they sit in the middle forever, and they look like they're half full right until the point where they just lose that last gallon in an instant. Yeah, and it was kind of – it was in that zone. I thought it was a six-gallon tank, and it was only a four-gallon tank. And since I was on my KTM, I went out and, like, you know, I'm, I, I was, I was, I was y yanking those guys. I was, like, you know, putting time on them and stuff. And then and – then, <laughs> so the whole factory Honda team, you know how it works. And uh, <laughs> I was on a KTM. 
this is back before they were, like, you know, Honda's really that good. But so I, 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 my bike started running really bad. I mean, it ran out of gas. I don't know why, but it ran out of gas. And I'm out there, and the Honda goes by, and he just looks at me like I'm on a KTM. You know, just another Honda goes by. And my phone, where I'm at, my phone doesn't work. I like, and, and I'm starting to count, like, okay, there's four guys out here. Third guy goes by. This is, you weren't out there on this training. I don't, I think, don't know. I don't think you're out there. It doesn't sound like one. I probably would have stopped. Yeah, you, I, you probably would have. Or maybe you'd passed me already. And I, you know, because you, you were faster. <laughs> so the last guy is coming. And I'm like, no, because I don't think they knew that I was kind of with them or friends of them or whatever. And it was it was one of the guys who didn't speak. I think he was one of the guys from the South American team that didn't speak any English. And and I, I had to like chase. I had to like run out and block him. And and I'm, I'm like, hey, hey, you know, because at this point I'm walking a long ways. <laughs> to get, I mean, like ten miles. Vende gasolina. Yeah, I'm like, hey, gasoline, and he's like, he's like, no, 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 I have done. And I'm like, hey, look, and I got some text. I was able to get a text out to Johnny. I'm like, Johnny Campbell, look, me, Johnny Campbell, friends, <laughs> give <him> some gas. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's never uh, pass up gas, Jimmy. Come on, I know, I should have known. I, I, I've almost done that too. I've almost it, it wasn't Bob. We're in California. It's like should have been cool. gases everywhere. Yeah. So. Everywhere but Dumont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everywhere but here to Dumont and back. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, good uh, good stories. Uh, we'll we'll have we'll have fun doing whatever we do. Or uh, we're just just mag magic map books, like we always do. That's all we're here for. We're here for. Um, with that, I think we're gonna. Johnny, you got any stuff to pimp? Or you're you're dirty. <laughs> he played mechanic today because our our mechanic Eric Seratin was. Driving across America, drinking Mountain Dew, so he couldn't make it. <laughs> you got anything for the show? Do we have any Honda questions for Johnny Campbell? Yeah. There's always questions for Johnny Campbell. Always dude. questions for Johnny Campbell. Um, Craig says, thanks, Ricky, Jimmy, and Logan for the answers and fun tonight. Um, yeah. That means so, closing we're closing yeah. out. <laughs> He's going to bed. Well, we went up against the elections last weekend. Last Tuesday, I call Tuesday a weekend around here. It's like the, my night off. Um, the time before was the debates. We slaughtered both of those things. I mean, th there was no comparison. Like our ratings were off the chart and people forgot to go vote because we had this show, which <laughs> might have caused the outcome. And, and, <laughs> and the, 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 the whole thing is nobody knew who to vote for because they were watching this show instead of you know paying attention to the debate. So... You take that for what it's worth, and uh, thanks, Ricky, for coming in. Yeah, thanks thank for you. <laughs> letting us uh, have a good time. I know these are the horrible interviews that you love to do, but um, you should no, just, these ones are way funner. You should let me because uh, they're be, not they're not real. They're like more for fun. You should let me be your PR guy. I, I could I can deflect. I think I know Johnny's shaking his head. He's going no, don't don't do this because <laughs> you need you need kind of like a man friend slash PR guy like like all the motocross guys have. We'll talk to Andrew about this next time. How you get like a a goofy man friend. And then, and then I can handle all the problems. We have a goofy man friend. His name's Pep. Pep? He's your PR guy? Yeah. Oh, I've talked to him. Yeah, please. I'll knock him off. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, everybody. Hey, Logan, you got anything else to say? Um, Ryan Jordan. No, uh, do we, we're done. Is it a good question? Oh, here we go. Yeah. He's a buddy. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, yeah, you. No, you got one other big important task. Take that paper away from him, by the way. Yeah. Away from him? I don't him. want him cheating. What do you mean uh, cheating? He has got he has homework on this show. Uh, John, Mike Barra, send Mike Barra to Dakar with you guys as a diet coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Barra would make it. No? <laughs> hey, what about that? Remember that guy that had you eating the horse horse food and stuff? When you were racing? <laughs> Ramey? <laughs> Ramey. <Yeah. laughs> Some different different things. Sounds how uh, like Jonathan Edwards freaking would make you eat that. Yeah, I so I um uh I wear climb gear because it's the it's the best gear. They're sponsor of the show. So I just want wanted to let you know that. What do you what do you wear? I wear Alpine Stars. Alpine Stars, that's good. It's not as good as what me and Logan wear. It's probably better than that stuff. Really? Okay, just checking. Uh, I'd like to thank Climb for uh <laughs> chiming in on that. Do you run recluse clutches? Me? Yeah. Um, what does he know? I don't no? know what I run. It's FCC. It's actually uh, the factory Honda clutch. Factory Honda. Yeah, it's not as good as uh, not as good because my clutch. I don't even have to touch the lever because I'm old. When yeah. you get old, Ricky, you will rip 
you will ask me about how can I get hooked up with recluse clutches because you don't ever have to touch them. And if you had a Husaberg and you had all that power, if you're not good on your clutch, you can get in a lot of trouble. Right, Logan? Yeah. And what about <laughs> and what about KTMs, Logan? Um, they're powered by a distinct ready to race mentality with North American headquarters based in Marietta, California. Um, they are... They're not winning across the world. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. You you, you beat him. <laughs> Stop laughing, um, Logan. Do the read. I, I don't even. I've, uh, I've lost where you're at right now. He was supposed to say what I was supposed to say, but different. Uh, yeah. Reputation. Great reputation on with street and off road motorcycle. As a fierce competitor. As a fierce competitor on the racetracks around the world. And which is shown in the product they develop and every move they make. With remarkable global success. I have a hard time saying success. We can tell. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Ricky, thanks for ruining my ad. Now, now, now we got to get Hanna to come in and sponsor the sponsor the show. But uh, that's okay. Actually, um, I, I was going to do a big read of all the different sponsors on the digital magazine, but you're going to have to go there and see um, who's in it. It's a really awesome product. Uh, check it out in your spare time when you're on the toilet however you read your digital magazines these days and uh, on the toilet <laughs> that's where that's where you used to read your magazines back when they were made out of paper you know what a paper magazine is logan yeah yeah when do you read the paper magazines um, when you're he's young he doesn't read when he just looks at the photos when you're when you're in school great <laughs> okay <laughs> with that we're gonna shut this show down uh <laughs> Uh, again, follow us on the YouTubes or wherever you follow us and all the other stuff. And uh, we're going to have a great time out riding dirt bikes, and we will see you out in the trail. Cheers. Cheers.